There are still 6.8 million fewer people out of jobs now than there were pre-pandemic. And we were just talking about ways employers are knocking down barriers to employment. One of those barriers may be drug tests. So let's bring in Bill Curran. He's the founder of the Curran Consulting Group. And Bill, you consult for drug test manufacturers and third-party administrators. We were actually just having a very spirited conversation in the commercial break about this type of issue. But what are you seeing in terms of this industry when it comes to specifically the labor shortage? Are you seeing a lot of employers citing it's so difficult for us to find jobs, we don't want to have this barrier of drug tests when it comes to trying to get prospective employees on board? Well, that's a growing issue. There's no doubt about it. But it's more specific than just drug testing. A lot of employers are, con are concerned that testing specifically for marijuana is preventing them from finding the right employees or finding enough employees. And so it's not really sort of the labor shortage, generally speaking, but what impact does testing for marijuana have on our ability to, you know, to fill our ranks? That's the big issue right now. Obviously, Bill, this comes at a time when we've seen more and more states legalize marijuana use. And I wonder to, to what extent there's a bit of a catch up period that's needed here. I mean, we were just talking about the Olympic trials last week and one of the athletes, um, gold medal hopeful, being eliminated because she tested positive for marijuana. And there was so much outrage, especially because so many states have legalized the usage. Yeah, so that's a growing trend as well. There are about 36 states that have legalized marijuana either for recreational use, so-called recreational use, uh, sometimes referred to as adult use of marijuana and medicinal marijuana use. And the, the challenge with that is that over the last two, three years, some of the states that have passed legal marijuana laws have also inserted into those uh, bills language that restricts employers from say, um, taking action based on a positive drug test result. Can you refuse to hire somebody on a pre-employment test if they test positive for marijuana? What if it's a reasonable suspicion situation? You suspect somebody's high on drugs, you test them and they test positive. Well, some states have actually said that in addition to the positive drug test result, employers also have to provide evidence that the individual was impaired or under the influence at the time. And that's why it led to an accident or some other aberrant behavior. And so employers are really caught in a tough situation now when it comes to drug testing, but really specifically drug testing for, for marijuana. Marijuana is definitely the number one drug that people test positive for, you know, followed by cocaine and opiates and um, opioids, I should say, and um, uh, amphetamines, for example. We saw opioid positives and amphetamine positives skyrocket last year during the pandemic. Marijuana went up also, but marijuana was already very high on the list. So a lot of employers are struggling now with, you know, what drugs can we test for? Uh, how, hard, how hard does it make for us to find employees if we test for marijuana? And then in some states, they ask the question, is it even worth the, the problem? Because um, they may have to jump through other hoops in order to take adverse employment action or refuse to hire somebody who tests positive for marijuana. Now, Bill, as you mentioned, there, there's definitely a, a, a you can't assume that same trends are happening with marijuana drug tests as there are with other types of tests. But I just specifically on marijuana, if we do see employers abandoning these tests, for example, which is what I'm kind of hearing, do you think that's a temporary thing? Do you think this is just something that they're just using to reduce the barrier for right now? And at some point down the line, when the labor market, uh, I guess, dynamics return something close to normal, they'll bring the test back or do you think that because of just also the federal trend of where legalization is going across the many states in this country, that a lot of these businesses will probably just leave them for good? Yeah, I think there's some percentage. It's probably a small percentage that have just decided to walk away from drug testing and have no plans to come back to it. But in certain industries, safety sensitive industries in particular, there's still plenty of drug testing going on. They haven't abandoned it. They haven't dropped it. Uh, in fact, they haven't even dropped marijuana from their drug test panel. I think where we're seeing more flux and more um, uh, movement is in the non-safety sensitive industry, food services, retail, other um, industries where employees are not necessarily doing something that could potentially uh, cause harm to another person if they're doing their job under the influence of marijuana or any other drug. So I think a lot of those companies are in that catch 22, whether or not they should do drug testing and, and then what negative impact does it have on hiring and filling out staffs and things like that. But in safety sensitive industries, very few, I think it's a very small percentage that have um, 
even consider dropping marijuana or drug testing generally. And then, and then beyond that, I think the, the thing that will probably happen, and this will take a few, uh, two, three years to occur, is more companies drop marijuana from their drug test panel or they stop drug testing altogether, we'll probably see an increase in people on the payroll who are mm -hmm. drug users. And with that, we'll see an increase in some of the some of the sort of symptoms of having drug users on your in your workforce, more accidents, uh, yeah. more employee theft, uh, more violence in the workplace, things of, things of that nature. And I think over time, companies that drop drug testing, especially in certain industries, will probably come back to it over the course of time. And Bill, I know you're on the testing side, but I wonder if you have any sense of how significant the worker loss would be if some of these businesses were to implement uh, the drug testing, those who are foregoing it. I mean, we had Garrett Reed on in the previous segment. Uh, he's in the fast food sector, and he said an, an overwhelming number of people uh, he would not be able to hire necessarily if he had to do mandatory drug testing. So you have to look at two different statistics. One is What's the percentage of individuals in certain industries that are that are drug users? So for food services is usually number one or number two. They trade places with retail on an annual basis as to which industry has the highest percentage of drug users or admitted drug users. But it's also an industry that hires from that demographic that's more likely to use drugs. Young adults between the ages of say 16 and 25, 26, 27. So they already have that issue of hiring from that demographic. But as Mr. Reed pointed out, he and I had a conversation in, uh, during the break that it would be tough if you were testing people from that demographic, which is very high in the food services industry, if you're testing them for marijuana more than anything, you're probably going to lose a fairly significant percentage of your workforce or have even more trouble finding workers if you have a very strict policy that if you fail a drug test, we're not gonna hire you. Or if you fail a drug test, we're going to terminate your employment. That would probably have a big impact on certain industries and food services would probably be one of them. 